This video is going to provide us some extra examples of conditional probability. Now, my goal with the extra examples is to really showcase the wide applicability of conditional probability. In lecture this week, we looked at an example that you could generalize as saying it concerns the health of the nation, uh, basically looking at how disease spreads amongst certain people within the population. These two examples are going to focus on the reliability of manufacturing a good or communication over noisy channels. Now that sounds a little bit general, the communication over noisy channels, but that essentially encompasses much of what we are dealing with today, whether our communication be across Zoom or these recorded videos, where you just heard some noise in the background, I think, or even um, just communicating across the internet. The internet is often viewed as communication over a digital network of noisy channels. So our first example concerns a factory with three assembly lines that produce my particular example here is computer memory, but it really doesn't need to be computer memory. This example will pertain to any factory with multiple assembly lines producing some good. So the way I want us to read this table here is assembly line one has 50% of the total production. So if you were to randomly choose a good from this factory, there is a 50% chance that um, the randomly selected good came from line one. So we'll assume these to be uh, basic probabilities. But I want you to read this defective here, this probability that a randomly chosen good uh, from this factory is defective. I want you to read this one as a conditional probability. The probability that the good is defective known that it came from line one. So that is, you went to line one, if you imagine this as like a data collection strategy, you went to line one, so there you are standing in front of line one, and you collect out, let's say, a thousand different products from assembly line one within this factory, and then you record how many of those are defective. This 4% would say 4% of the goods from line one are defective. 4% of the goods from line one are defective. So we know it came from line one, but there's some probability that the good is defective or not. Okay, so that's how we'll read this table that I've created for us. So the question is as follows, given that the chip is defective, so we know the chip is defective, find the conditional probability that each line produced it. So one example of this would be, what's the probability that line one produced it given that the chip is defective? So if you know you have a defective chip in hand, you want to know from which assembly line that defective good came, or at least you want an assessment of the probability that your good came from a particular line. So we'll assume that the probability any good from this factory is defective is 0.037. That will be helpful because this calculation considers the probability of the intersection of the two events, that the good came from line one and it's defective, divided by the probability that it's defective. So here, what we've assumed is that the denominator is 0 0.37. So what we need is the numerator. We need probability that a randomly chosen good from this factory is both from line one and defective. And now based on the information we have, we can calculate this probability of the intersection through the following product. And you'll notice all I've done is rewritten the 
definition of conditional probability, which normally is defined in terms of this, but instead I've now multiplied both sides by the probability of A1. What I've done is taken a piece we need and rewritten it in terms of two components we have. So this probability here is just the probability that a randomly chosen good from the factory came from assembly line one. And this probability here is, should be read as follows. If you are to take a randomly chosen good from the factory, and then you learn the partial information that that good came from line one, assembly line one, what's the probability it's defective? That's exactly the number I gave us in the table above. So we'll go 0 0.04 times 0.5. And we'll just plug whatever that is into our formula above. Now I'm encouraging us to do all of our calculations in R. So here in R, I can just type this out. 0 0.04 times 0. Oops. 0 0.5 divided by 0.037. And the answer is 0.54. So if you were to randomly select a good from the factory, from this factory, say you bought an item from this factory, and then you found out this item was defective, you went and returned it to the company you bought it from because it's defective. Well, the company would like to know what's the probability the good came from line one. And that's exactly what this statement here is to tell us. The probability that the good, which is defective, came from line one is 0.54. There's a 54% chance your defective good came from line one. That's a crucial piece of information for the factory owner if you have returned this good to them. So I'm going to leave you with two, uh, three practice problems just from this one example here. You could repeat this entire calculation for lines two and three instead of just lines one. And so those are two examples right there, uh, two practice problems right there. Repeat this example for lines two and lines three. I've given you the rubric for uh, line one. The third practice problem from this one example is use the law of total probability to calculate this number yourself. Use the law of total probability to calculate the probability that any randomly chosen good from this factory is defective. The correct answer is 0.037. The second example I'm going to go through in this video concerns communication of bits of information. Now, believe it or not, your computer runs on bits of information. That is zeros or ones. Everything you do on a computer at some point gets boiled down to zeros and ones in various patterns. We call a, an element of information a bit and we treat it as either a zero or a one. So this is very related to the Bernoulli distribution. Suppose that a bit is sent through a noisy communication channel, just one bit. Because of the noise, whether it's literally like static in the signal or because your signal maybe has to um, uh, travel a great distance or something like that, because of the noise, the bit may be received incorrectly as the opposite bit. That is, you send a one and it is received as a zero or vice versa. So here is a table of conditional probabilities that I've put together. So suppose the bit was sent as a zero. There is a 90% chance it is received as a zero. Suppose the bit was sent as a zero. There is a 10% a chance it's received as a one. So if we were to write this out, we need to be careful about the fact that we are dealing with sets of bits and there's a difference between sent and received bits. So the way I'm gonna write this number symbolically as a probability in our probability symbols is this is the probability a one was received 
given that a zero was sent. This is not great notation, but it's relatively easy for the purpose of this example. So we'll stick with it. We will further suppose that the probability that a one bit is sent is 0.6, and the probability that a zero bit is sent is 0.4. So there's a 40% chance you send a zero and a 60% chance you send a one. Okay. That was just to get us into the setup. The questions are like this. What is the probability that a one bit was sent given that a one bit was received? So if you are on the receiving side of this communication channel, you know that you received a one. You would like to know what the probability is that a one was actually sent. You only have partial information. You would like to know the probability that your information is correct. So let's just write this out one more time. This is condition on a zero being sent. What's the probability a one was received? And notice this is backwards from what we want. This is the benefit of the conditional probability definition. You often have information that is in some sense opposite in the world of conditional probability from the information you want. So we're going to use the definition of conditional probability to answer this question. First, we'll just substitute in the definition of conditional probability. And whatever is conditioned on goes in the denominator. So based on this definition of conditional probability, I can find the numerator as information we have, that is the probability that a one was, oops, sorry, received given a one was sent, that's this point 0.8, times the probability that a one was sent, divided by the probability that a one was received. So this is 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 the probability of one was sent, divided by 0 0.52. Not yet going to tell you how I gave you, got this one, because I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. So jumping into R, this is 0 0.8 times 0 0.6, divided by 0 0.52. That is 0.923. We'll just round to two decimal places. So there is a 92% chance that you have correctly received a one bit. That is, you received a one bit, there's a 92% chance that a one bit was sent. So I'll leave you with two practice problems from this example. That is this second question down here, and how to calculate the total probability that a one bit was received. That is going to be an application of the law of total probability.